Our next topic is 2, 3, 4 trees. So uh, 2, 3, 4 trees are not a binary tree. So they're the first example we'll see of a serious multi-way tree. Um, they're named because of the number of subtrees involved. So an individual node will contain a uh, one to three keys. Uh, so in my notation, I'm going to include an additional sentinel value, which I'll label with infinity as well. Uh, sometimes that makes this a little bit easier to think about and a little bit easier to implement. Um, in a little bit, we'll also look at some examples uh, using a, an online tree diagramming tool, and I'll explain how the uh, concept of infinity is kind of represented there. So uh, each node contains k keys in order, so one to three keys, then they're in ascending order, typically. Um, and the nodes contain k plus one links to subtrees. So one through three keys means two to four subtrees, and uh, hence kind of the name of our uh, data structure, the two, three, four. It's really about whether nodes have two, three, or four subtrees. OK, so uh, the. There's a link for each individual key and the infinity value too in the notation I'm going to use. Um, we'll, we'll kind of see again how that can be represented slightly differently without the concept of the, the infinity node. Um, okay, so uh, subtrees have a relationship very comparable to what we saw in binary search trees. So a uh, subtree will be associated with a particular key and it'll, have a, it'll contain keys whose values are less than the parent's value. Uh, one of the things that's a little bit unusual about the 234 tree is that it grows at the root. So as we'll see, instead of adding new leaves, occasionally we'll grow a new root node. And it's also unusual in that all leaves are at the same level. Uh, so when we were looking at both heaps and the two types of binary search trees, we, we didn't necessarily have all leaves at the exact same level. Um, so this tends to look a little bit more balanced in ways. Okay, so I want to go through a couple of examples of what a node could look like. So this would be a, a, a two node. It has one key and links to two different subtrees. So I'd kind of think of this, this node as having kind of these two major concepts, the keys that it stores, and in this case it's storing a single key and then my special infinity value. And then uh, for each of these keys, in, including the special sentinel infinity, uh, there's a link to a, a subtree. And so for the first key, the subtree would contain keys that conceptually come before the root node's key. Um, and of course, every value would be before infinity. So that the subtree uh, for the infinity node we could kind of think of as, coming, as including values that come after the um, key that I've labeled key, but certainly before infinity. Okay, so this is what a the smallest possible node would look like. It would have a single key and links to two subtrees. We could have a node with two keys, which would look something like this. And again, I'm including kind of the special uh, infinity sentinel value. So if we have two keys, we have links to three different subtrees. And the first uh, subtree would contain things that come before the first key. The second subtree would contain things that come uh, after the first key but before the second key. And the third subtree would contain things that come after the, the second key, but before the infinity key. Okay, uh, if we just add in uh, one, more, uh, one more key here, we have our largest possible valid uh, node. So this contains three keys and links to four subtrees. And again, the relationships are still the same. Um, so uh, the subtree associated with a particular key will contain key values before the associated key. Um, and these are still in a, a well-defined order. So if we look at the third key and its subtree here, the third key comes after the first and second keys. Um, everything in its subtree come after the first and second keys, but before this third key's value. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the insert process, and then to get a more concrete feel for it, we'll actually work through some examples using um, uh, a web-based uh, diagramming tool. So when we do an insert, it's always going to insert in a, a leaf. 
Now, the leaf may become too big, so we're going to be adding a key to a leaf, and if it already has three keys, it'll suddenly have four keys, and that kind of violates our, our limits on the number of keys we allow in a leaf. When that happens, we're going to do something called a, a split. We'll basically split the node into two different pieces, and we'll have a, a leftover key that we'll promote to the parent. Okay? So as, as kind of a, a diagram, imagine that we've got a parent node here, and uh, it's got a particular key that refers to a node. Um, when we do the insert, we'll actually insert it down here into the leaf. So this would be a, a place where we'd encounter a problem. We've already got three keys. When we do the insert, we're going to end up with four keys. If, if there was only one key here, wouldn't be a problem. If there are only two keys, wouldn't be a problem. But this is, this is where we encounter a problem. We've got three keys. We'll go ahead and add in this, this fourth key. And um, now our node is too big. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to uh, split it. We'll split it right here. We'll break it into two valid nodes. So we can still have a node with one key and a node with two keys. Uh, and then we're going to have uh, an extra key that we need to do something with. When we split this, uh, we can no longer have just a single link coming from the parent. We'll need to have two links from the parent. OK, so we'll split it. Um, basically, I've, I've taken key one and I've left it put, and I've taken key three and I've left it. Okay, so here we've split the nodes. So uh, key one goes into the, the left node here, key three and four go into the right node, and key two is kind of where we decided to break this in, in two, uh, and we're going to leave it out. So um, I'm still going to end up with a, the same number of kind of subtree links here. Um, but now we have to, to basically have uh, kind of two nodes coming down from the parent. So we're going to take key two and promote it into the parent. And just like we did with AVL trees, we're going to try and make sure that when we do that, we maintain the relative ordering in relationships of keys with respect to uh, values. So um, key two had been under the parent's key. So we conceptually think of it as, as coming before the parent key. So when we insert it, it'll, it'll go up in here uh, right before the parent key. Um, and key two, uh, key one down here in our child node comes after key two. So we could kind of think of this subtree as being the things that uh, uh, are dangling off of key two. Okay, so we can go ahead and, and reorganize like this. Okay, now notice what's happened here is that the parent node has now grown. Now we could have kind of a cascading problem here where the parent node now is too big and it causes a split. So uh, this could cause the, the parent to, to encounter this overflow problem and we could cascade up the tree until we get to the root. And eventually we have to split the root. And if we uh, push a node out of it to the parent, there, there's no parent above the root. So that's where we would create our new root. OK, so with that, let's go ahead and try a, a couple of example problems. OK, so here we have a, a web page that simulates uh, what are called B trees. We'll come back to that later in the module. But the 2, 3, 4 tree is essentially a, a type of tree. and uh, it's defined by the maximum number of subtrees, or the degree of any particular node, which is four. So uh, to simulate our two, three, four trees, we'll be sure to select a degree of four here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do some inserts here. And again, this is just using keys that are numbers. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and insert uh, 500. And this will create a new root node here with uh, 500 in it. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and insert uh, 250. And uh, our root node isn't yet full. Remember, it can contain up to three actual keys. So I'm going to go ahead and insert that. And notice, again, that the keys are in order. I'm going to go ahead and insert 750, which will come after the 500. And at this point, my root node now has three actual keys. When I do an additional insert, uh, we'd be inserting a, a fourth key into here. And uh, that will be too many keys. So we'll have to go through the split process. Um, now, this doesn't show any sort of a special infinity value. Basically, it shows the um, relationship by, uh, by using um, kind of before and after links to the subtree. So a link coming before 250 would be the uh, link to a subtree containing keys that are less than 250. A link between 250 and 500 would be a link to a subtree that contains keys between 250 and 500, and so on. 
Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and insert uh, 900, which will be inserted at the end here. And uh, this will cause our, our subtree to split. So it'll split at the uh, 500. That'll become our new root node. 250 will go to the left, 750 and 900 will go to the right. So insert it, we do our split. And again, notice that the position of the links kind of indicates the idea of, of before and after relationships. A link before 500 is the subtree that contains values before 500. Link after 500 is a, a link that to a subtree that contains keys after 500. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do a, a couple more inserts here just to show the tree continuing to grow. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and insert a 400, which will come after the 250 but before the 500. And now I'll insert a 300. I'm basically going to cause this node to continue to grow and split. Um, so I insert a 300, it just gets inserted in there. Um, and now it's kind of at its limit. If I insert something else below 500, it'll go into this node and cause it to split. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and insert 100. So 100 comes before 250. So uh, uh, our four values will be 100, 250, 300, and 400. It'll cause the split here at 250. And that will be pushed up to the parent. And we'll end up with two subtrees here that kind of maintain the appropriate order. OK, so notice that it did push the 250 up to the parent node. Uh, which now has two key values. Uh, again, it maintains these links such that our ordering property is maintained. The leftmost link is everything that comes before 250. The link between 250 and 500 is everything that comes between 250 and 500, and so on. Um, okay, so I, I advise spending some time with these, these sorts of examples, cause the tree to grow. Uh, see, if, see if you can uh, generate some examples that cause uh, some cascading growth scenarios. Um, where it will uh, cause multiple nodes to split and grow. Um, so I'm going to go do a sequence of inserts here. Okay, so in that case, we had this cascading example uh, where a node caused a split that caused another split further up the tree. And we again have a new root value.